have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. see, see. It, it looks something like this. Frame by frame animation used to be the only way to animate, before computers and all the software existed. It is still used today to replicate the quality and the look of this traditional animation technique. Every frame is drawn individually, which takes a lot of time, patience and experience. I've done all the stuff you just saw directly in After Effects, so there are ways to do frame by frame animation in After Effects. In this tutorial, I'll show you how. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel, let's start with some basics. I've added a shape, size, 400 by 400 pixels. Let's move it from left to right with two position keyframes. We set a keyframe at the beginning, then at one second it has moved to the right, which gets us a boring linear animation. So we open the graph editor, select the speed graph and slow down the beginning and end of the animation. Now we need to reduce the frame rate. Traditionally it's 12 frames per second. We use the posterized time effect for that. You can see the difference. To accelerate the effect, I often use 8 frames per second. Instead of using the effect, which affects the whole layer, you can reduce the frame rate of just one property by adding the posterized time expression. We add an expression to the property, add a line on top, and add posterized time and 8 frames per second in parentheses. Add a semicolon at the end. To make it work, we need to add dot value here. Awesome. This way it only applies to the property you add it to. The third method is to use toggle hold keyframes. We set a keyframe at the beginning again. Right click on it and turn it into a toggle hold keyframe. At one second we move it to the right again. A toggle hold keyframe suppresses any animation until the next keyframe. It's like a freeze frame. So we've locked in two key moments. Now let's work on the time in between. At 12 frames we want it to be at the middle point. Let's say the frame rate is 8 frames per second. At 3 frames we want it to start slow. So the distance is small. At 6 frames the distance gets bigger. The shape speeds up. At 9 frames, let's move it to somewhere to the center between the two keyframes. So the distances between keyframes determine the speed of the shape. And let's check it out. When animating, it would be awesome to see the frame before though, so you can see the distance. To be able to do that, we use the CC white time effect. We add it, and now you can see the step before and after. Let's move three frames forward and change the position of the shape. You still can see the last position, which helps a lot. So the shape is quite fast at this point. Let's move on and slow it down. Then it's almost there. We deactivate the effect and check it out. Quite fast in the middle part. Let's quickly adjust some of the positions. Much smoother. Expressions like the posterized time expression make your life so much easier. You can create a particle rig for example. Once set up, you can use it again and again, and again, impossible with keyframes, or create responsive animations that automatically adjust to your comp size. I know this is overwhelming at the beginning. That's why in my course we start from zero. In 30 lessons we go through the basics. Basic expressions, responsive animations, dynamic text animations, and repetitive techniques. A more than 50 page long expression sheet will accompany you, plus bonus content with even more application examples. Upgrade your skills and learn how to animate with expressions in After Effects. Make sure to check out the link.
Before starting an animation, you should make a storyboard to have a plan. After simulating movement, let's create a handmade style as well as a change of perspective. We go from this 2D square to a fake 3D cube and add a scribbled style. First of all, let's add a shape again. We name the layer cube. Size 400 by 400 pixels. Then we select the rectangle path property and convert it to a BC path. We select the path and move it to the left. On top of the scribble. To be able to rotate the cube, we need a second rectangle. For the second side, we duplicate the rectangle one group inside the layer, move it below. We open the new path property and move the two left points almost to the right edge. Then we set keyframes for both paths at the beginning. Then we go to one second and create the end position. We select both paths, all four points and move them to the right. Then we select the four right points of both shapes and adjust the right edge. Press Command and T for Max, Control and T for PCs. Then hold Command and Shift, respectively Control and Shift to expand the edge. Then we move the two left points to the right. Then we select these two points and move them to the right. To create the right side of the cube. The storyboard I added underneath makes it much easier. And we created the basic animation. You can move these points to the right edge now, if you want to. Awesome! Then we should change the color. Use gradient fills instead of solid colors. For the left part, let's set the fill color to gradient fill. We choose a bright pink. and a dark cyan. The light comes from the upper left corner. Let's adjust the start and end points. The right part, let's choose darker colors. Let's choose a dark pink and a dark blue. And we position the start and end of the gradient again. The start and end points of the gradients don't move along though. So let's add a keyframe for both properties for the left gradient. We actually should name the groups left and right so that it's clear. We go into the gradient fill group and add keyframes to the start and end property. We go to the beginning and adjust both positions. Awesome! Now that we've set all keyframes, we press U to see them. Let's adjust the speed of the animation. We open the graph editor, select all properties, select all keyframes and first of all add easies to them. Then. We further slow down the start and end of the animation. When the timing feels right, we add the posterized time effect. And set the frame rate to 8. Now let's add a scribble texture to make it look more handmade. Therefore, we add turbulent noise. And first of all, we set the blending mode to soft light so that the gradients shine through. Then we set the contrast to 180, brightness to 45. In transform, we deselect uniform scaling. Set the scale width 
to 1, the scale height to 3000. Let's increase the complexity to around 7. We created vertical lines. Finally, we animate the evolution with a time expression. We add an expression and add time asterisk 1000. To apply the reduced frame rate to this effect as well, we need to move the posterized time effect to the bottom. Effects are read from top to bottom. Now it applies to the noise animation. Then let's slightly transform the shape with each frame. We add turbulent displays above the posterized time effect. Amount 5, size 50, complexity 1. And we animate the evolution again with a time expression. Time asterisk 1000. Awesome. Next, let's add a stroke or a scribbled outline. We duplicate the layer, disable the fill for both shapes, and add a white stroke instead. Width 4 pixels, which adds a stroke around the two shapes. To make it look like hand drawn, we add roughened edges. Above the posterized time effect, set border to 2, complexity to 2, and we animate the evolution with an expression again. Time asterisk 1000. We copy the stroke layer to add even more detail and simply change the random seed number of all effects. You can find it in evolution options so that this second layer of strokes has a different animation pattern. The exact number doesn't really matter. I chose 10. And now it looks like two strokes scribbled on top of each other. I've added a background, which is a solid with a gradient ramp. And I've added some shade to place it on the floor. It's a dark shape, which I've animated with toggle hold keyframes. My frame rate is eight frames per second. Still need to do some fine tuning here. Awesome. That's how frame by frame animation works in After Effects in principle. You can animate complex stuff as well, of course, like this hand animation. Somehow I love animating hands. I always start with a scribble, photo, or use video footage as reference. In this case, I took a picture of my hand. Then I always create the main shape. Then I add layers for the light and shade and other details. I use the main shape as base for these layers, link the path properties to the main shape path so that all shapes are exactly the same at all times. Then I change the color of these shapes and cut out parts of them with masks. After the start frame is created with all layers and shapes, I start to animate the main shape of the hand, setting keyframes to lock in key moments. Then I work on details, like slightly moving single fingers in between these key moments. And when the movement and timing feel right, I start to move along all the masks of the light and shade layers, which honestly takes a lot of time, but I love that look and moving masks for hours is meditative. The particles are created with expressions, by the way. You learned that in my course, link is in the description. On the left side, I've added a video you might like. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye everyone.